So everybody uh, knows what's expected of them today? Yeah, we've checked the uh, publicity photos, costume, last-minute rewrites. It's uh, it's all set. We're ready for a location shoot whenever you are. Good. And all the uh, travel arrangements, they've been made? Anybody who doesn't have a car, we got them in a bus, and we got hotel reservations. Well, good. Sounds like we're in good shape, then. I'm glad you canceled the taping today. I could use a breather. Yeah, uh, you've done a great job. Thanks a lot, Harry. See you later. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good morning, Sarah. Is it? No. No, I was up on the mountain all night, and your dad, Vicky, everybody's still missing. Well, I am so worried about them. How long can they stay down there? I mean, how many days before that place just comes crumbling down around them? I don't know. I'm lucky, though. I've had something else to think about. In fact, it's about the only thing that could keep my mind off the whole rescue operation. What's that? You. I'll sit over here. It's just a little further, further. I can't drill. I can't make contact with the people down below. I didn't sleep a wink last night. I feel, I tell you, I feel so damn useless. I know, darling, I know. Maybe all we can do right now is pray to the good Lord that he'll help us get through this and then he'll bring Vicky and Tina and Cord back to us safe and sound with everyone else. All right, there it is. There is what? Paul, if I'm right, I just figured out a way to break through to eternal. Just let her sleep. You know, if Roger hasn't come back by now, I think we're going to face the possibility that he may never come back. Uh, uh, oh, honey, honey, she's starting to wake up. Just don't let her know how you really feel, okay? Tina? Cord? How long have I been asleep? Oh, we came out long enough. I really think you ought to go back to bed. When did Roger come back? Why didn't somebody wake me up? Uh, Vicky, he, he's still out there. He's still out? No, no, no. He has to be back. He said he would only be gone a few hours. Uh, I'm sure he's on his way back right now, right, Cord? Uh, yeah, right. L listen, Vicky, he probably got lost in that dark cavern someplace, so, so he's probably just taking it real slow right about now. Oh, you both terrible liars. He couldn't have taken this long to find the river and make his way back again. If he hasn't returned by now, that can only mean him. Thank you. You can't think that way. Vicky, Roger knows his place better than anybody. Now, I'll bet you any second he comes waltzing right through that hole. I should never have let him try it alone. Uh, look! Hey! Oh. Look here! Oh. Oh, Roger! Hey, Roger, where you been, man? Don't you stop for coffee and donuts or something? Roger, why did you scare us like that? Oh, thank God you were alive. I was so afraid for you. Sorry. I almost died in a mausoleum. I'll tell you about that later, but right now, get everybody together. I found a way out of here. All right. We're going home. There's a river, all right. We know that, Roger. The question is, where does it lead? We wondered where all the bodies had gone after they were floated downstream. Now I know. The river flows into an enormous underground cavern, a burial ground. Then it disappears under the rock. We call that good news. If we follow the river, then we end up with all the rest of the dead. Well, is that as far as the river goes, Roger? Well, no, of course not. I mean, a river has to go into something. It flows into an ocean or a lake. A well, I, I learned that in Geography 101. Oh, Tina, this isn't your high school class. No, but she's right. The river does lead beyond the burial ground. I saw daylight through a little fissure in the rock. Now, according to my compass, the river finds its way underground until it emerges at the western slope of Lantano Mountain. Then that's our way out of here. Through solid rock? Well, we dug our way through to the river, didn't we? If we get some tools, 
and float downstream until we reach that bit of daylight I told you about, we can break through the wall and make our escape. Well, all right, that means we're on our way to freedom. You hear that, Christine? That means we're almost home. Okay, we don't have a moment to lose. While I was exploring, I saw cracks throughout the entire mountain wall. Doomsday device is still ticking. We're already living on borrowed time. Okay, let's hurry to the supply room. Wait, you and Gordon, you need to get to the two of the I don't think you can You need a rat Okay, the rest of us, we'll need food, bro. Rats. Okay, let's hurry. Sorry, love. All that pretty gold is staying here. Clint, I don't get it. If you know a way to this godforsaken place, what are we sitting here for? We should be up at the rescue site testing your theory. No, that's just it, Paul. We've been digging in the wrong spot. What are you talking about? We're digging right through the entrance of the tunnel. Yes, fortified with solid rock. But last night I had me a little brainstorm, Paul. Landview River, Landview River. What about it? Like any river, it has to have a source, right? Only in this case, the source is right here in Lantano Mountain. Don't you get it? This mountain is the starting place for a bunch of underground streams and springs. Now, water follows the course of least resistance. And when it runs into solid rock, it just goes around it. Which is what we should be doing. Exactly. That's why I had the, the geologist dig up this topographical map. And together, we looked for the nearest source of water using the tunnel entrance as the center of the radius. And that's how we found this spring. And it ought to be... Right over there, not a hundred yards from where we've been digging. Don, I know what this blue means, but what is this yellow? It means water, right? What's the yellow around it? Well, that means that we don't have to do any drilling or use any dynamite. That is not a brainstorm, son. That is a stroke of genius. I'm gonna tell the foreman, get some more bulldozers up here and some dump trucks to all the dirt away. Oh, clear, Don. Maybe things are fine looking up. Yeah, there's still a lot of work to do. For one thing, I gotta call the hospital. Hospital? Whatever for? Well, Vicky and the rest of the people have been down there for a long time. There's no telling what kind of shape they're gonna be in when we finally get them out of there. And I think we ought to have a, an emergency medical team standing by just in case. Let's get moving. All right, great idea. An ambulance will be with you shortly. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, I don't think there's anything to worry about it, but if you bring him in, we'll check him out. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Emergency? Yes, it is. What are you doing here? I'm answering telephones. Correct me if I'm wrong. I was under the distinct impression that you had agreed to cut back on your workload. Now, isn't today your day off? Yes, it is then, my day. Then what are you doing I here? am helping Carol answer the telephones. In, okay? in the emergency room, the most stressful place in the entire hospital. Larry, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just sit and take it easy when somebody here needs my help, huh? Brenda, you're being careless. You're being immature, unrealistic about this whole thing. You know as well as I do that all it's going to take is for you to run yourself into the Emergency. ground and before you Listen, know it, I don't you... want to hear any more about my condition here, these negative thoughts. I know how to take care of myself and I don't think that I am at any risk or the baby by answering a phone. Dr. Wallach. Yeah. There was a two-car collision over on state. We've got three red blankets plus three other victims. All right, I'll be right with you. Listen, Brenda, your day's off are in order to keep you away from stressful situations like this. I want you to stop worrying about work, start worrying about your blood pressure. All right, I'll start worrying about my blood pressure, and as soon as somebody comes in here to relieve me, I'll go home. That satisfy you, Larry? Yeah. <laughs> Emergency. Clint, this is Brenda. Yeah, how, how was everything up there? All right, that's great. We'll have an EMS team up there just as soon as possible. Right. Uh, Clint, um, my prayers are with you, okay? Yep. Wait a minute, we need to get the uh, EMS team up to Lantano Mountain Stat, okay? There's only me and the driver, but we'll do the best we can. Wait a minute, hold on. Um, Carol, can you take care of these phones here for a second? Sure. All right, I think you may need a hand over there. I'll go 
over with. Yes, it is. So what do you think? You think these will help? Oh, yeah. We can use anything and everything we can get our hands on to get through that rock. We're going to have to make a hole big enough to get that raft out. Yeah. rope? Yeah, good idea. Who knows? Maybe it'll help us on our journey to freedom, huh? Yeah, freedom. What's the matter? Man, I, I tell you, I can't wait to get out of here. I can't wait to look at a blue sky. Can't wait to look at a tree oh, oh, or to see some fresh water. Come on, wait. You got to tell me you're looking as forward to getting out of this hell hole as I am. Yeah, well... There are a couple of dark clouds in my blue skies, if you know what I mean. Boy, you're talking about your troubles with the cops? Well, Court, I, uh, I helped Leo evade the law. Yeah, but you just did that to help out Christine. Now, I'm sure if you explain it to Rafe in the right way, he's going to understand it. Or maybe part of your problem is trying to figure out if your top priority should be Mary Lynn or Christine. Well, Christine is important to me. I care about her, but I realized I'm really in love with Mary Lynn. Christine's having a hard time accepting that, huh? I think it's going to be Mary Lynn who has a hard time accepting it. See, I went to Canada without telling her, or why I went. And when we came back to Landview, Leo took off to the mountain, and we followed him, and we're trapped. She just thinks I ran off with Christine. Wait, that doesn't sound like the Mary Lynn I know. Our marriage was on kind of shaky ground before all this. Hey, look, you don't have to tell me about that, but let me tell you something. Tina and I survived all kinds of earthquakes, but the reason we made it is because we just kept on loving each other. I know, but sometimes it takes more than love to make a marriage work. Well, I, I can understand that and appreciate it. But love sure helps, you know? I mean, if you love each other, you can get through a lot of troubles together. You hang in there, huh? I'm sure not gonna solve any of my problems standing down here. Yeah, I can call and get to work. That might fall and clean up this site. Well, Don, I don't think that that's necessary. I mean, that map. I don't clearly... give a damn what the map said. If I have to bulldoze that whole damn mountain, I'm gonna do it. Asa, darling, I feel, I know that you feel that you need to do everything in your power to take care of those poor souls that need freeing. But you are pushing yourself to the limit. You are doing the best that you can. Then why do I feel so helpless? Because you're Ace of Buchanan. You like to see things getting done. You like to see something happen. And you are not used to turning the fate of those that you care about over to somebody else's hands. Well, Renee, I have got to apologize to the man upstairs. Why is that? Because I was mad as hell, and then I realized that myself and all those other creatures were helpless. You just cannot stand around and not work. Asa, darling, please, you are exhausting yourself. Just rest for a little while. There's a time for resting. This is a time for action. You have a crew. They're taking plenty of action. Now, come on. Be good to yourself. Close your eyes just, just for a while. What if they come across them? Darling, you have a foreman. He will let you know. Now, please, relax. I know that you care about everybody. But sometimes you have to care about yourself, too. You know, you've got to conserve your strength. Because when we do rescue Vicky and Tina... Cord, too. Yeah, darling. Sweetheart of the rodeo, do you know that? A little to the left. So that's why you've been on my mind, sir. I'm just trying to be, trying to think of a way to apologize to you, but I guess the easiest way is to just come out and say I'm really sorry. You don't owe me an apology. I like looking after CJ. Look, I feel like a chump. Why? Because I should have realized what Megan was trying to do, volunteering you to babysit. Well, at least she admitted it. And I'm glad you told me about it. Well, I don't want to cause any troubles between you and Megan, but I just felt bad her forcing you to babysit CJ while she went back up to the mountain just to be a part of that whole rescue effort. That's the reason she gave you? Yeah, yeah. Why? <sighs> Never mind. Um, what else did she tell you? Just that she was sorry and she was going to find some way to make it up to you. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, well, 
I still feel bad about taking advantage of you. It's not your fault, all right? Okay. Megan um, has a way of getting what she wants. Anyway, uh, what's on the schedule for today? Well, we're all getting ready for the location. We're not going to be shooting any scenes in the studio. So You know what? You could go back up on the mountain if you want. That's OK. It's no point just standing around there. It's so frustrating watching the rescue crew. Anyway, I'm sure they'll call if there's any news, good or otherwise. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Hi, well, hi, Sarah. Amanda. Just got off the phone with Ted Block. Great. What does our illustrious sponsor want now? I quote, tell Bob Buchanan I want that long overdue remote schedule on my desk, and I want it now. Did you tell him that I've got a few other things on my mind other than his damn schedule? Please don't put me in the middle of this. Just call him and straighten everything out, okay? Good. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll call him. I'm going to call him, and I'm going to tell him that there's not even going to be a remote. Now will you tell me what you're really going to tell Ted Block about the schedule? I'm not kidding, Melinda. I have enough headaches around here without having Ted Block breathing down my neck. Now, if he doesn't just back off, let me run this show my way. I'm going to tell him he can take his Sarah, schedule. Sarah, Sarah, could you excuse us for a minute? Wait a minute. What's going on here? You can't blow the show off just like that. I mean, we have a huge chunk of working capital to bring Fraternity Row to WVLE. No, I, I know. I realize that. Oh, you do? Okay, well... Speaking to my co-owner, then why are you acting so irresponsible? No, I'm acting from the best interest for this whole show and everybody that's involved with it. And canceling the remote and possibly risking everybody's job is in best interest? Nobody is going to lose their job. Half the staff will if Ted Block takes this show somewhere else. Well, half my immediate family is trapped under a damn mountain. I've got two actresses. I've got the consultant that I hired for the blind story all worried sick about their families. Now, how the hell are we going to concentrate on the difficulty of doing some remote? That's their job. That's what they're paid to do. They're human beings. Damn it. I'm not going to treat them like a bunch of wind-up dolls where they just perform if you punch a button. All right, look, look. I appreciate your concern for your fellow workers. I mean, I feel for them, too. But this remote is the culmination of this whole stalker storyline. So what are you going to do? You're going to drag this thing on? We're going to lose all our audience after you bore them to death. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I'm not going to cancel the whole remote, but I am going to postpone it, at least until I hear something positive about that whole rescue effort. Not good enough. Ted Block wants that schedule today. No, I, I'm not pushing my people to the wall. Well, you're going to push Ted Block to the wall, and you know what's going to happen? He's going to fire you and take the show somewhere else, or just dump the whole thing. And then you know what's going to happen? That spells financial ruin for everybody. So you just think about that, partner. Hello. Are you angry at me? What do you think? All right, I guess that I owe you an apology for asking you to stay in Landview and taking care of CJ. Asking? All right. Begging you to. Tricking you to. Thank you. I didn't have my head on straight. I was just so worried about Dad. Look, just save your explanation, all right? Bo has already told me about your little, uh, confession. Well, then you know how guilty I oh, feel. Oh, please. Sarah, I'm Let's serious. Go. I feel just awful. Why? Because you got exactly what you wanted? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the way you manipulate people to get exactly what you want. And then afterwards, you play your role to the hilt, don't you? Just wallowing in self-pity and guilt. Well, if I had known that you were going to react this way... Oh, right, maybe... right. You thought I would just forgive and forget, didn't you? If you didn't want to take care of the child, you should have just said so, That's Sarah. not the point, Megan. I like looking after CG, all right? What I don't like is the way you are continual... Forget it, all right? It's not even worth talking to you about because you don't care about anyone but yourself. No, now you just wait. Just wait a second. This has nothing to do with you, and it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with both, doesn't it? You're just jealous because I spent time with him and you didn't. Sarah, I want you to know that I am not trying to come between you and Bo. I was having a hard time. I needed somebody to lean on. Believe me, it's not going to happen again. I believe it. Because I'm going to make sure it never does. Ah, Clint. 
You making any, we making any progress? Well, it's going slow, but we are making headway. Brenda here just came up with the EMS team, so everybody's going to be in good hands once we finally get them out of the tournament. Brenda, thank you so much for helping. Oh, I'm glad I can. Well, I got a light of fire under my phone. Come on, Renee. I'll be right there, Don. I got your paw to take a little rest. Always works, Wonders. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. They're all set up over there, Clint, but I just wanted to grab some time and ask you a few questions here. Yes, such as? Well, I forgot to leave the hospital with Vicky's medical records, so if you could refresh my memory on a few things, like if she has any allergic reactions to any drugs. Uh, not that I know of, no. Okay, and what's her blood type, then? Oh. Okay. Is that positive or negative? I realized that uh, they could be in serious condition when they come up out of there. That's why I had your team come in. Right You're asking questions about blood type and all. It really sort of drives it home. Well, we could be facing a lot more than just physical problems. They've been down there a long time, Clint. You know, we just have to face them. Freedom. Michael, please, this could be our very last chance. I said no. What happened to the man who used to love taking a risk? Are you that desperate to get back to your loving wife that you've lost all your courage? You will wish you out of this. Gladly. I know you read that journal, which means I'm convinced you know how to avoid the rest of the traps that are down here. What is this? You're going to lay back and then go for the gold yourself? Look, if you're so damn interested in getting that gold, why don't you come back with a couple of experts and have them figure out the traps, huh? That's a brilliant move that would be. Because we both know that when we reach the surface, then the treasure in Eterna won't be a secret anymore, oh, will you it? little fool! I lived here. I know what lengths they went to to protect their goods, not just poison gas, but a hundred other fatal measures. Now, you're going to do exactly as I say, and you're going to leave it alone! I'm going to do exactly as you used to say. I'm going after something that we were supposed to go after. Fine. Destroy everything you've ever worked for. Kill us all. Leave your son without a mother. Bathe yourself in the gold, okay? Getting out of here. We need to break rock. Let's oh, see. Where are you heading off to? Oh, well, I was going to the dining hall. I thought I could get us some supplies for our trip down river. I, I'm afraid it's going to be a long trip. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to see how Christine's holding up. I'll meet you in the great hall later. Yeah, I'll uh, wait. I'll uh, catch up with you in a couple minutes, all right? Ooh, so, honey, how, how are you really holding up? Well, I'm much better knowing that we're going to get out of here soon, honey. I'm so sorry I haven't been as brave as everybody else. What are you talking about, huh? You have been terrific. You know that? No, I haven't. I've been constantly complaining about never seeing CJ or anybody else we love ever again. Honey, you know, all of us have had some kind of doubts about whether or not we're going to get out of here. Some of us are just better keeping it to ourselves. Yeah. Thank you for keeping my spirits up. That's why I'm here, you know. Tell you one thing, though. I'm never going to take anything for granted again. I'm not just talking about CJ. I'm talking about just being able to, like, feel the sun <laughs> again and, I don't know, look at the trees change color in the fall. And wearing that sexy dress you bought on our honeymoon, hmm? Yeah, well, first thing on my list is to see my son. But a close second is to get out of this disgusting uh, uniform. Do me a favor, though. Let's wait till we get home before you strip down your skivvies, hmm? So what are you going to do when we get home? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. For a long time, I'm going to do plenty of nothing. <laughs> just going to take a week off, just you and me, OK? And then we'll spend our mornings in bed. 
and then we'll take CJ to the park. You're just gonna hang out and not do anything, and especially stay away from all kinds of radios. We are gonna get out of here, aren't we? I mean, we really are gonna go home. Honey, yes. I promise you that. You just gotta hang in there a little while longer, that's all. I know. I know there is work to be done, so I have got to be strong. Honey, I love you. I love you. Come on, we better get a move on, huh? No, 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 no. I, 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 am pa I am past angry. I am furious. What is it going to take for you to realize what's at stake here? There are a lot of lives at stake here. That's what. That's right. What about your life? What about your baby's life? Brenda, you're asking for trouble if you can't take it easy. What am I supposed to do, Larry? Am I supposed to take it easy where there are a lot of people out here working themselves and they need assistance and you they're short-handed? You have got to learn to take care of yourself. Larry, I take care of myself. I have been monitoring my blood pressure, and it's fine. Now you're your I own doctor now. I, not, I am not a doctor, but I am a nurse, and I'm committed to taking care of people who need my help. All right. All right, you're determined to be uh, Florence Nightingale to the hilt. Fine, I will help you at least until the paramedics get here. Great. Well, then look at this list that I made and see if I've left anything out, okay? Wait a second, I got a better idea. Vicky's cabin's just down the hill a little. Why don't we go down there and see if we can pick up some uh, some fresh clothes, some blankets, that sort of thing. Okay, all right, let's take this room a little bit. First of all, um, I don't think I have to remind any of you what's happening up on Lantano Mountain. You've all shown us a tremendous amount of support, those of us who are concerned about our families and our loved ones, and for that I want to thank you. And I also want to thank you for all the work that you've done uh, leading up to our remote. But after careful consideration, I've decided to postpone the location uh, until a later date. Now, I've also decided to keep uh, Megan's and Mary Lynn's scenes down to a bare minimum until we know a little bit more about this whole rescue situation up there on the mountain. Well, thank God. I didn't think I was going to be able to keep up this pace. Mm -hmm. Bo, could I speak with you for a moment, please? We're going to, to uh, keep taping our studio scenes that lead up to the remote. But since I won't have Megan or Mary Lynn at my disposal, we're going to make some changes in the long story. Bo. Now, you know that this whole location centers around the crowning of a carnival queen, and then it climaxes with a campus uh, stalker being captured. Now, originally, Mary Lynn's character was supposed to be crowned queen. Please don't do this to me. But I've got... Sheldon uh, working with the writers, and they are going to uh, give us a new queen. Well, who's it going to be? You. What? I'm, but, but Nora's not even really a student. I mean, she's just undercover so she can catch the stalker. Mm, that's okay, because Sheldon's going to be able to work it out. Terrific, Melinda. There goes your bank account, your apartment, WBLE. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, thank you. That's lunch, everybody. Okay, lunch. Sure. He can't do that to Mary Lynn, can he? He's the boss. But it just doesn't seem fair. Mary Lynn should be the snow carnival queen, not Audrey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Just what kind of a stupid stunt was that? That's called making an executive decision. No, no, that's called financial suicide. Postponing the remote, replacing Mary Lynn as, as carnival queen. Ted Block is going to have your head. Oh, God, what am I going to do with you? Trust me. I don't have any choice, do I? Mr. Buchanan. 
You know, I, I think that you're making a really big mistake in replacing Mary Lynn. I mean, nobody is going to buy Audrey as the carnival queen. I don't remember asking your opinion, Neil. Yeah, well, I just think that it's obvious well, that she's really too old. I don't care what you think. I'm not going to have some intern telling me how to run my show. Well, you wouldn't have a show if it weren't for Mary Lynn. Well, you do have nerve. I got to hand you that. I just call him as I see him. Mm -hmm. Well, do you see that door? You're going to go through it courtesy of my boot if you ever mouth off to me like that again. You got that? waving to my adoring public. <laughs> oh, Mary Lynn, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess it's really rude of me to talk about it in front of you. you. You didn't have your heart set on it or anything, did you? No. No, of course not. You mean you really don't mind me doing the part? Oh, believe me, it's a load off my mind. I didn't know how I was going to get up on that float and act happy knowing that Wade is trapped under Lantano Mountain. Uh, excuse me, uh... Audrey, we've got a photographer coming in that wants to do some publicity shots. So could could you go down to wardrobe and get in the uh, Carnival Queen costume? Sure thing. See okay. you. Bye. Jack. Listen, Mary Lynn, I'm really sorry. I had to make that announcement without talking to you first. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm glad the pressure's off me. Yeah. Listen, everybody's going to be OK. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Thanks. You don't have to admit I'm kind of glad you're not going to be queen after all. Why? Well, since I'm the campus stalker, that means that I have to strangle you in there. <laughs> well, I don't know if I could really do a good job of that. <laughs> Sweaters and coats and blankets, everything those people are going to need when they come out of the mountain. One. Except you're not going back there, Bram. What are you talking about now, Larry? You're staying here. No, I am not. Now, let's get this stuff and go. You tricked me into coming up here, didn't you? You wouldn't give me any choice, Bram. Locking you in the cabin is the only, only way I have of protecting you from yourself. Larry, unlock this door. It's I'm ridiculous. sorry, I can't do that. No, I don't. Uh, uh, don't you grab these keys from me. You're not getting them. What, what about these clothes and the blankets? And those people are going to need this stuff when they come up in the mountain. What when are you doing? When they come up, we will get the two of them. But in the meantime, you stay and put. This is the most ridiculous pig-headed, right, right. stubborn, okay, okay. Wait, stupid you, thing I've ever seen anybody do in my life, Larry. Before gets a little too long, why don't you just come over uh, here, enjoy this respite, however forced, sit down. I can't believe this. Put it's... your feet up. Come on. That's right. Come on. Up we go. Get there. And as I remember, Vicky keeps a pretty well-stocked larder here, so what would you like for lunch? Your head on a platter, please. <laughs> Protect me. What if there are even more traps? Oh, it's hopeless, Gabrielle. It's just hopeless. Wait a minute. Your gold? Oh, yes. <laughs> if I can't take anything else, let's see. Explosion. 
didn't come in the stab factory and fell in with my hands. I'll share it with you. Come on, we can divide it into pieces, pieces of gold. You can just as big as me. You've got gold on the brain, at least what's left of it. I'm going to do it. that the photographer is going to use for the publicity shots. Where would you like him, Mr. Buchanan? Well, I think that one's pretty good right there. I think that one should be back a few feet to the right. I still think Marilyn should be winter carnival queen. No, I'm sorry. Casey, what did you just say? Uh, nothing, Mr. Buchanan. How's that? That's great. Just yes, great. Why don't you grab some lunch, Casey? I think you look terrific. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I should be doing the dance from Singing in the Rain. You know, the one where, where the scarf like flows out behind her? Yeah, yeah, but you know what, Audrey? <laughs> these are going to be publicity stills, so we'll just try to keep this dancing down to a minimum, okay? Listen, uh, thank you for giving me the part. I really hope I don't disappoint you. Ah, uh, you're going to do a fine job. <gasps> Fans! I mean, this, is exact, this is exactly like the movie! I, I should be like... Standing in the wind, just standing. Well, actually, there'll be a backdrop uh, depicting the uh, Winter Carnival float, and you'll be waving to everybody. You'll be waving to everybody out here in the front, and then that scarf will be just flowing behind you. I'm sorry. I just, I just, I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, and I'm so late. You know what? I'm going to run up to the uh, office and see what's taking the photographer. You just hang in here, OK? OK, Doc. Get the dancing out of your system. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Looking down on all your adoring faces, I can't help but feel honored to be your carnival queen. And as your carnival queen, I prom... As your carnival queen, I prom... Okay. As your carnival queen... What do I promise to do? Oh, here it is. And as your winter carnival queen, I promise that I will always do away with midterm examinations and that everyone will be afforded free tickets to all football extravaganzas and that anyone on the football team will... Stop. Bo! Bo! Foreman says we're doing very well. No time for celebration, but... He figures he'll be through to the spring before the end of the day. That's when we'll try and hook up with that underground river. But, darling, there are so many rivers. How are we going to know which one of those goes into a turn? We'll just have to check them out one at a time until we find the right one, Renee. Meanwhile, I'm going to check on the crew, make sure they're not using any heavy equipment to cause a bunch of vibration. The court already warned us about the city crumbling down around their ears. I don't want any more cave-ins until we get them the hell out of there. When? That's the difference. Darling, soon, hopefully, real soon.